Good evening and welcome to Empowering You for Victory in Jesus' name. Moen and I send our fondest love and greetings to every one of you. Now we are looking in the empowerment sessions of the faith, the, of the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And we have looked at the following heroes and exploits of faith. We've looked at Abel, that Abel offered, it's by faith he offered a more excellent sacrifice. Then Cain, his brother. We looked at Enoch, by faith he was translated and didn't experience death. We looked at Noah, by faith Noah received instructions about building an ark and he prepared and built an ark to the saving of his household by faith. We have looked at the obedience of Abraham and last week we spent a whole week looking at Abram's faith. Now when we look at these heroes of faith except Abraham, because Abraham, you see more than one exploit mentioned, but with the other heroes of faith, you, the Bible just speaks about one exploit of faith. And so it's interesting that heroes of faith, that their fates are in chronological order until you get to Jesus and he is the fullness of that faith and then that's the faith of God now because all the heroes of the Old Testament were just showing just one of Abram two uh, exploits of faith but now when you get to Jesus and then coming to us because we live of his faith. It is a fullness of faith. And we all receive like precious faith of the apostles. And now we don't just do one exploit of faith. They just live by faith. We now live 24-7 by faith because we are actually born again. So now I want to look at... Isaac, it speaks of, of Isaac now, Isaac's uh, faith, <laughs> very, very powerful. It says, by faith, Hebrews 11.20, by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Just one sentence about Isaac's faith. And it was by faith, he blessed his children concerning things to come. Now, the Amplified puts it like this. With the eyes of faith, Isaac, looking far into the future, invoked blessings upon Jacob and Esau. So, faith has got eyes to look beyond what you are going through and look at far into the future and you can bless generations to come. So it's by faith we bless our natural children and we bless our spiritual children. Now the blessing of God in Proverbs 10.22 it maketh rich the blessing of God makes you what you never were. It's a blessing of God. That's a blessing of God. And He, God, adds no sorrow. When the blessing of God is working in your life, there is no loss there. Because sorrow speaks of loss. Now if you look at, by faith, Isaac blessed a Jacob and Esau, I want to read it from Genesis 27, 
because we see the reality and I've been studying now Abram, Isaac and Jacob how this blessing came from Abram came into Jacob was conferred into Jacob conferred unto Isaac and conferred into Jacob and so it's a multi-generational blessing that can continue to work in generations even after the person that has blessed you is gone to be with the Lord. Now, I know that God has blessed us all. Believe me. But the things that are recorded even in the Old Testament, the Bible says they recorded for our admonition on whom the end of the ages have come. God does use man to bless his children, both natural and spiritual. God does use ascension gift ministry to confer the blessing of God to work in your life, even though God had blessed you. When Abram came back from war with spoils of war in Genesis 14, I mean, the reason he won the war is God blessed him. But the Bible is very clear that the priest Melchizedek, King Priest Melchizedek, conferred the blessing upon him. So you hear much today amongst various people, I don't need a man to bless me. God has blessed me. Now, I've taken note of people who speak like that. And when you look a little closer into their lives, it's rebellion. And there's no manifestation of sonship blessing in their lives. Very, very sad. And so, friends, there is a divine order in the Word of God. And we see this in the patriarchs. We are learning this in the Bible as we're studying how this blessing of God is is transferred from generation to generation. Now, Genesis chapter 27, reading from verse 1 to verse 5, very powerful. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old, and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold now, I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out into the field and take me some venison and make me savory meat such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went into the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob his son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak to Esau thy brother. The point I want to leave with you today, family, you see how Isaac wanted to confer the blessing onto Esau because he was the firstborn. Now we are all the church of the firstborn, so we understand that Jesus Christ is the firstborn. We're studying principles now. And so what he wanted to do he wanted Esau to go and kill a buck or two and to cook him some food that he loved to eat, that his soul may bless Esau before he dies. I want you to see that this transference of blessing comes out of a son doing something for the father 
and the father feeling so good about it that he releases the blessing. The chances are is that the blessing is not conferred on someone that you don't feel good about. You will love them, but to actually release a blessing is very difficult if that person has not honored you. Now in Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God had given thee. Ephesians 6 verse 2 and 3, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, that it may be well with thee, that you may live long upon the earth. So you see, this person that's going to bless you, going to confer the blessing, whether it's your natural father and mother, whether it's the priest of God, there's an authority that confers the blessing. But just like Esau had to do something to gladden his father's heart, and you have to Honor those that are in authority over you and that that authority feels so good for you to be blessed and they prophesy and they confer that blessing on you. It's called the Melchizedek order blessing. So God bless you today. You be careful of those that are over you in the Lord, both your natural parents, your spiritual parents, and the apostolic ministry that's over you is a fathering spirit. It was the father that conferred the blessing. And even here with Isaac, Rebecca fully understood how this blessing works from a father to a child. So God richly bless you. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for our online viewers. I pray for each one of them today. And I thank you with the conference of blessing. There is the one who blesses and the recipients. God, it is you that connects hearts together and causes that blessing to make them rich. I confer the blessing of God to be activated on each of our online hearers. And the blessing of God maketh you rich. And God adds no sorrow with it. In Jesus' name. God richly bless you. See you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye.